So today we're going to talk about the trig functions, okay? And these are going to be fundamental in this class. All right, so if we have the coordinate plane, and suppose we have some angle, and we'll call that angle theta. This symbol is called theta. It's a Greek letter, and we usually use it to represent an angle measure. Okay, and so this angle um, is formed by this initial side and then this terminal side, this ray coming out of the origin. Okay, so the angle measure is the amount of rotation that this ray has made from the initial side to its current position. And so we're just going to draw a right triangle, and it can be anywhere on this ray. It can be up here, it can be down here, it can be all the way over there. It doesn't matter um, because um, any, tri any right triangle you draw here is going to be similar um, to any other right triangle, so it'll always be proportional. So our ratio will always be the same. Okay, so if we look at this, okay, so here's a point P, just any point P on that ray, and um, we have an X value and a Y value. Okay, so the X value is here, and our Y value is the height, okay? So that's where those numbers come from. And then if you remember your distance formula, great. You can use that to find the length of this segment right here. If not, you can just use Pythagorean theorem, okay? If you know this distance, so this x value is negative, so you would take the absolute value of it. It's basically the distance from the origin to point Q, okay? And then for the height, that's already positive because we're in the second quadrant. Um, so you can just take the y value, but if it was in the third or fourth quadrant, you would just take the absolute value. It's the distance between the x-axis and the point. Okay, so whatever, um, whichever quadrant you're in, it's just the distance between the x-axis um, straight up to that point. Okay, so we've got, and this is our r, and we're calling it r because we're gonna, later on we're gonna get to a circle, and this is actually the radius of the circle. If you continue, this line segment, if you just go all the way around, that creates a circle. So we're going to call this R because it, it really is a radius. Okay, so again, there's your distance formula if you want to use that. Or you can just use Pythagorean theorem because that's where the distance formula comes from. All right, so our trig functions. Hopefully you learned in geometry that sine is the y value over that hypotenuse, the r value. Cosine is the x value. Um, over the R value, and let's just do this, because you might remember it better this way. This is the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is Y over X, or the opposite over the adjacent. All right, and then they have reciprocals. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's R over Y, or the hypotenuse over the opposite. Secant is, um, and cosecant is written out, let's see, uh, written out like this. Cosecant. C-O-S-E-C-A-N-T. And then secant is just S-E-C-A-N-T. Okay? And it's the reciprocal of cosine, so it's going to be R over X, or the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then we have cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's x over y, or the adjacent over the opposite. Okay, so those are our trig functions. All right, so now let's take a look at an example using this trig function. The terminal side of an angle theta in standard position passes through the point 6, 8. So that's going to be in the first quadrant. Find the values of the 6, trig functions of angle theta. Okay, so I like pictures. It helps me to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that first quadrant because I know that's where the point 6, 8 is in. All right, so there's my y-axis. There's my x-axis. And the point 6, 8 is going to be somewhere over here. All right. So I'm going to draw a right triangle out of this. Now remember, with trig ratios, you have to have right triangles. Okay? So I'm going to draw my vertical line, and yeah, that's not perfectly straight, and that's okay. 
but I did put my little box there to show that it's a right angle, okay? So this is going to be the point 6, 0. That's a comma. Doesn't look like a comma, but it is. Okay, so that means that this distance is 6 and this height is 8. So my x value is 6, my y value is 8, and because it's a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that r value would be. All right, so we can do 8 squared plus 6 squared equals r squared. So 8 squared is 64, 6 squared is 36. So 64 plus 36 is 100. And the square root of 100, uh, let's just, I'll just show that. Now keep in mind, anytime you take the square root, you've got to have that plus or minus in there, okay? So this is going to be plus or minus 10 is r. <clears throat> now it's important to look at what, well, whenever it's the r value, it has to be positive because you can't have a negative length. You can't have a negative radius. Okay, so this, the r value has to be positive. If you were solving for the x or the y, it would depend on what quadrant you're in. If you're in the second quadrant, your x value could be, would be negative. If you're in the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. And if you're in that fourth quadrant, your y is going to be negative. All right, so we want positive 10. Okay, so that, that tells us that this is going to be 10. Okay? All right, so now we're just looking at the trig functions. So, this is going to be very, this is the easy part, okay? So now, remember that sine was y over r. So sine of theta is y over r. So that's going to be 8 over 10. Now, you can leave it like this, or you can simplify it if you wish. And that will simplify to 4 fifths. And then cosine of theta is x over r. So it's going to be 6 over 10 or 3 fifths. And then tangent of theta is y over x, so it's going to be 8 over 6, or you can simplify that to 4 over 3. Now remember, cosecant was the reciprocal of sine, so you just take your answer and flip it. Oh. It's the reciprocal of sine. Secant is r over x, or the reciprocal of cosine. And then tangent is the reciprocal of, I'm um, sorry, cotangent is the recipro reciprocal of tangent, so it's x over y. And you can look at your tangent and just take the reciprocal of that. So here you have your cosecant and your secant and your tangent, and then you have your sine, cosine, and tangent right there. So that's, um, th those are the values of all the six trig functions. All right, now let's take a look at example number two. The terminal side of an angle in standard position, of angle uh, theta, in standard position passes through the point negative 8, negative 15. Find the values of the six trig functions of angle theta. Again, I'm going to draw it. I like pictures. Um, because both of our x and our y are negative, we're in the third quadrant now. So there's my x-axis and my y-axis. And I've got the point, uh, I'll do this. Uh, we've got the point negative 8, negative 15, so that's going to be approximately right here. Okay, and so we'll draw our perpendicular to the x axis. You always need to draw that perpendicular to the x axis, not the y. So it's always going to be a vertical line. Whenever you're connecting your ray to, or your line segment to, um, to make that right triangle, it's always got to be using a, hor a vertical line. Okay, so now if, if this um, point, we've got this point here, if this value is negative 8, then we've gone 8 over. So the point is negative 8, 0, and this distance is 8. And then this distance would have to be 15. 
Um, but remember, it's an x and a y value, so we need to put those negatives in there. The distances are positive, but on the coordinate plane, they're negative values. Okay, so now we need to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what is that r value or the hypotenuse. So we have negative 8 squared. Now I put that in parentheses because if you don't put it in parentheses, then you're only squaring the 8 and not the negative, and then you'll get the answer wrong. So make sure that you're squaring the whole value of x and the whole value of y. Okay, so that's going to be r squared. So we've got 64, because remember when you square a negative, it becomes positive, and then you've got 225 equals r squared. And so then we get, let's see, 289 equals r squared. And then again, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Whenever you take the square root of both sides, you've got that plus or minus, because it could be a positive, it could be a negative. Um, and then the square root of 29, you can use a calculator for this if you want to, um, but it's 17. If you know your, your perfect squares up through 20, that's good. Um, and we're going to make it, we're going to keep it positive because that's the distance from zero to that point. Okay, so we want to use a positive r, and now we're just going to do the same thing we did in example one. We're just going to list all of the trig functions. So let's move this up a little. Okay, all right, so now let's look at sine. Sine of theta is y over r, or opposite over hypotenuse. So that's negative 15 over 17, and that's not going to simplify. Cosine, remember, is x over r, or adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's negative 8 over 17. And then tangent is y over x, or opposite over adjacent. So uh, y over x. And then the two negatives, a negative divided by negative is um, positive, so we get 15 over 8. Okay? And those you can just leave the way they are. And then now let's do the reciprocals. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So cosecant, well, I can't write today. So cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of that, so it's negative 17 over 15, and really that negative can go with the 17 or 15, it doesn't change the value. Um, so that whole fraction is just negative. And then the reciprocal of cosine is secant, so we abbreviate that as SEC, and we take the reciprocal, so it's negative 17 eighths, and then the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, and we can just take the reciprocal of our final answer, which was 8 fifteenths. So these are our cosecant or our, um, reciprocal function values, and then these are the um, the standard, the basic function values.